Okay, today's video is going to be about this uh, display box I made for my homemade Nixie tube. It's just basically a wooden box that has a power supply and driving circuitry to interface with this hard to drive little tube. So let's get it open and see what makes it work. Okay, well the big hole in the top and the tube sticking out might give it away. Okay, so what we have inside here is a ring oscillator made with this 6AK10 triple triode. And that's one of the simplest uh, circuits you can make to make uh, three different sine waves of uh, varying phase, which is basically what I need to drive the three digits of the tube. And there's a few different parts to this. We have uh, the high voltage power supply right here, which generates the 500 volts that this tube needs to run. We also have a voltage multiplier back here, which uh, provides the negative 52 volts that the tube needs for bias. And we have the two power transformers in here. This transformer right here is one that I wound myself from an old uh, power supply adapter transformer and I have a spool of uh, 42 gauge magnet wire that I just wound as many turns on here as I can. And that puts out about like 520 volts or so. And we have the second transformer right here, which provides the filament voltage for the tube and also about 12 volts AC to feed this uh, voltage multiplier. So this, this right here, it's basically just a three-stage voltage multiplier, which takes the 12 volts AC out of here and multiplies it to about uh, negative 52 volts DC. And uh, that gives the to the correct bias it needs to function. Just let me take the camera out and give you guys a closer look. Those three capacitors right there are used in the uh, ring oscillator. Here's the power supply, 500 volt supply, multiplier, Right there is just a resistor in series with the winding for the tube filament because that puts out about 6.5 volts and the tube 6.3, so that just drops it a little bit. And the tube. So that's the tube has held up fine so far if it can. Not really wanting to focus, but uh, it's just mounted on some pieces of cork right there just to provide a little bit of cushion. And I just have uh, these curled up wires right there to take any rele uh, stress or strain off the leads as much as possible because if you break those off, the, the tube's pretty much dead. So that's pretty much it for the inside. Um, so I think I'll go to the schematic now and go into more detail how this works. Okay, here's the schematic. Here we have the two transformers. Uh, the high voltage one is really simple. Just a bridge rectifier and then two 630 volt 0.1 microfarad capacitors right there. Gives us about 522 volts. Right here is the transformer for the filament and the bias supply. Uh, this was originally a 12 volt AC transformer, but what I did is I ripped the plastic off of one side and scraped the insulation off until I found a winding that gave close to 6.3 volts, and I soldered a wire onto there. So that was kind of a hack. Right here is the voltage multiplier. That gives us our negative 52 volts to bias the tubes. And here's the ring oscillator, a grid of one tube, 
just connected to the plate of another and the grid of that tube is connected to the plate of another and then goes back into a circle to form a ring. Uh, because of the high voltages involved I want to use some high impedance resistors right here to minimize any current draw. So right here 22 mega ohms going from the grid to the plate and right here are 4.7 mega ohm resistors that are going from the grids to the bias supply. So that for, sort, sort of forms a voltage divider between the, the bias supply and the plates. And here you have the capacitors that actually charge and discharge and form the oscillator along with the resistors. The easiest way I can think to explain this is as a group of inverters with delay. Each one of these tubes is configured as an inverting amplifier and this capacitor along with these resistors forms a delay element. So let's just assume that this tube right here is turned on but there's no longer any supply causing it to turn on. And the reason it will stay on is because it has charge stored up in this capacitor that will keep it on even though there's no longer any signal coming back to make it turn on. So what that will do is will cause this plate to to pull low, which will increase the voltage right here because it's negative 52 volts here now, causing this point to pull low will make this point more positive, which will start to charge this capacitor and start to turn this tube on. And that is happening as this tube is starting to turn off because this capacitor right here is being discharged by this resistor. So as this is happening, this tube is starting to be turned on more and more by this one. And just as this one starts to discharge, this capacitor through here, this tube is turned on fully. And then what will happen is that the plate of this tube will be pulled low. And it will start to turn this point right here positive. And it will start to turn this tube on. So basically, it's just a big circle, each tube being turned on by the last tube that was on, and the last tube turning off because it's no longer being turned on by the previous tube. Sorry, that's a little confusing, but this circuit can be more complicated than it first seems. That's pretty much it. Thanks for watching.